Hello everyone, my name is Studdington, and welcome back to Love at First Sight. On the last episode, I do believe we are, we made it into the final act. Gosh, see, then this, now we're, then after that we made it into this screen, Rui's side. Now, I have no idea who Rui is, it's probably a character we already met. But I think we've only seen like five, five models, five characters. Maybe it's a new person, maybe not. But now, let's jump back into this. Oh, uh, it's the, I think it's this girl. <laughs> I'm seriously in a bad mood. I want to hit something. I'm in class, but I'm so pissed. I can't concentrate on what's being taught. Last weekend, they said there was some kind of event going on, so I went to town to check it out. What I saw there really disgusted me. I saw another group of students from my school there. I'm not saying I hate them, just because they're from my school, though. What disgusted me was that they were with one of my classmates, Yusui Sachi. Of course, I couldn't start something there in that crowd of people, so I just beat the crap out of a trash can and went home. What? Why do you dislike her? What has she done to you? I hate those guys. By the way, this might be my angry Sundarian voice from now on. That girl with only one eye, well, she's fun to kick around, but I don't hate her because of how she looks or anything. Oh, you don't? I hate her because she's a spineless insect. That's still no reason to hate her. I... Even if I insult her, she never gets mad. Even if I grab her leg and trip her over, trip her up, she never tries to fight back. She never complains. Hell, she never even glares at me as she's scurrying away. Like, don't you think like you shouldn't do that? Like, she... Isn't that crossed your mind? The way I see it, there's no reason for me to stop anytime soon. She'll never ask anyone for help. She'll never even have friends who can help her. I hate her, but I love how she trembles when I hurt her. Oh fuck. That's why she'll, that's why she'll always be my punching bag. But lately, she's been getting between me and my punching bag. But lately, something's been getting between me and my punching bag. There's been some second year guy who I think only transferred in a few months ago, and he's been sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. I doubt that Weeling just asked for help from some upperclassman she doesn't know. I bet he's just helping her because it makes him feel good about himself. It lets him feel like he's better than someone. But I couldn't care how much he needs to use her as his pathetic and confidence booster. Sure, believe what you want. She didn't do anything to deserve that. The coward. She just got lucky. This weekend, she was with that second year guy and two others. And she looked so happy. It made me sick. I've seen the other two she, she was with before. I especially remember that Akimi girl. In middle school, she came to preach to me about how I was so mean or some crap with that stupid white knight attitude. As soon as I found out she... She was in this high school. I was going to. I waited to see if she'd come at me again. But she never did. I doubt she wants to do it with me anymore after what I did to her. But now I feel like she's spit in my face. I'm running out of patience. Finally, the bell breaks and school's over. Sachi's going to try and be the first one out of the classroom again. But today, I'm not going to let her get away. I reach the doorway for her and stop her from moving, leaving, whatever. Hey. Yes. Come here. I want to talk to you. I've actually just realized that the that like the the background for the names are is a sticker, not a sticker, a bandage. <laughs> after all these after all this time of reading, I've just noticed that, huh? Grab her arm before she can say anything and drag her out of the classroom. That hurts. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. 
I would normally start using her as my punching bag right then and there, but this time I need to find somewhere we won't be disturbed. School's over, and the only students on the stairway are those going to their club activities. I drag her up to the door that leads to the roof and pin her there. Uh, s stop it. Uh, please. Did that little bitch just try to talk back to me? Jeez. What the hell did you just say to me? I, I, I said, uh, this, uh, Any resistance she wants to show me leaks out of her, and she shuts her mouth. Her white knight friends must have been trying to get her to stand up to me. I don't like that, and I let her know by driving my fist into her stomach several times. Why? Like, you, you have no reason to bother her. Like, really? <laughs> oh, jeez. You have no reason to bother her. Like, she's not doing anything to you. This time, all she does is take it. So much for standing up to me. See? She'll never change. I shove her and she tumbles backwards. As she comes tumbling down, something falls out of her pocket and hits the ground with a clatter that echoes in the stairway. <gasps> No! Looks like it's her cell phone, and she's got a new strap on it that I've never seen before. I pick it up in my left hand before she can and move to smash it against the ground. Are you serious? No. She stares at her phone like a retard. But her eye is suddenly on me, and it's full of rage. Whoa! I've never seen such a piercing, angry glare. It stops me before I can throw her phone. Her freakish eyeball is only making it worse, and that eye seems to be brimming with courage I've never seen in her before. Leave me alone already. She jumps back onto her feet, and I can tell she's not going to back down this time. Dot, dot, dot. And give me back my phone. She's yelling now. I'm so surprised to hear her raise her voice at me that I stand there stupidly for several seconds. And the phone in my hand starts to ring. Nice ringtone. He's calling. Give it to me. Like hell I'm going to just keep let her have it. Give it back now. But she doesn't wait for me to move in marching up to me, tries to snatch the phone out of my hand. No, you don't. I shake her off and aim a punch at her face. And she tries to block it. <laughs> what is this, Dragon Ball Z? I've never seen her fight back or try to protect herself like this before. She's no fighter though, so even with this newfound energy, she can't stop me from dragging my fist into her face. Even though my blow connects, she stands her ground, barely letting out a sound and regaining her balance right away. Before I can pull my hand back and sh she grabs onto my wrist. G give it back. And again, she reaches for the phone in my left hand. Now that she's holding onto my right hand, I can't hit her as easily. I push into her shoulder with the arm she's latched onto and kick her left leg out from under her. Oh gosh. I think you should be doing that on stairs. It's probably not safe. She's already leaning forward and reaching for her phone, so this easily throws her off balance. <laughs> oh no! Reflexively, I push on her again and throw her onto the floor behind me. I turn around to follow the throw off with another punch. Or I try to. Oh shit! We're on the stairway. There's no floor behind me. Oh no! No! Oh, this is not good. I had sent her flying with more force than I meant to use. Everything seems to slow down as she flies down the stairs towards the landing far below her. Oh! Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, 
Oh. It's back to us now. Oh. Um. Um. Uh, let's continue. Wait. Such is not here, right? Yet? I thought you went to find her. I arrived at a Shirak at the exit of the school building to find Tomo and Akimi waiting there. Today, like always, I went straight to the first year classrooms to meet Sachi. I couldn't find any trace of her, though. So, think I might have missed her. I headed here. Maybe you just didn't notice her in the crowd. No way. She'd have said something to me. We've never missed going home together. I don't think she went home early either. Hmm. Ah, hang on. Akimi runs up to a passing student and asks her something. Someone she knows? Well, yeah. But you've seen that girl before, haven't you? Akimi's asking her about Sachi Chai. Now that he mentioned it, I think I do. I sometimes see her when I go to meet Sachi at her classroom. Actually, she's in the same class, isn't she? Meh. Kimi really does have a big network of friends. Whatever the student is telling her, Akimi suddenly looks very worried, and she runs back to us. Maku! She said that after class, Sachan left the classroom with Rui-chan. Oh no! With Sadokawa? Where did he go? That much, I don't know. I've got to find her. Hey, Muro. Jeez. Well, I guess it would be more efficient if we split up. Muro will probably be going to the upper floors. So, Kimi, you check the first floor. I'll search around the outside of the building. Uh oh. Gotcha! Uh oh. Until now, Sadakawa has never actually tried to take Sachi away anywhere. Or at least, Sachi's never told me if she has. I've got a bad feeling about this. I climb the stairs as quickly as I can. Wait, what am I doing? I should try calling her before I go searching blindly. I take out my phone while I'm running up the stairs and call Sachi. Of course, until she actually picks up, I can't do anything but search blindly. I pass the second floor by. Those are our classrooms, and if Sadokawa's going to take Sachi somewhere, he's not going to be anywhere near us. If she took Sachi outside of school, she would have had to go past Tomo and Akimi since they're waiting by the shoe rack. The first floor has some has too much traffic going through it, so she wouldn't go there either. Wow, well, Mamoru was a detective. Given all that, it's very possible that she took Sachi up to the third floor. Finally, I arrived at the top of the stairs on the third floor. But now what? There haven't been any clues that might point to where they've gone so far. Sachi hasn't answered her phone, but it must still be ringing. I rest at the third floor landing, trying to figure out what to do next. I hear a ringtone coming from nearby. It's gotta be Sachi's. That must be close. It's coming from somewhere above me. I immediately think of the stairway leading up to the roof where Sachi and I ate lunch together not so long ago. Give it back. I hear a voice cry out from the same direction. It's definitely Sachi. I sprint up the stairway. The moment I turn on the midway landing between the two floors, I see Sachi fly down the stairs in front of me. And behind her is Sadokawa, arms stretched. Watch out! No! I jump up the stairs, my body operating on instinct at this point. Eek. Sachi! My mind goes blank as my body dives forward, just barely managing to get my arm between Sachi and the floor. And the force of her fall brings us both down. It's not what I might consider a graceful catch, but at least I stopped her from hitting her head. Yay! Mamuro to the rescue! Sachi, are you okay? I get a hold of myself and manage to stand up before helping Sachi to her feet. Senpai, you, you came for me. Yeah, are you hurt? I, I hit my knee. Why do you think I'm fine otherwise? Oh, not the knee. Oh. I guess I couldn't completely protect her. She grimaces as she lets go of me and tries to stand on her own. As I look her over and check for other injuries, the first thing I notice is a bruise on her face that she didn't have when we met for lunch today. It doesn't look too bad, though. Too bad, though. 
so we can deal with it later with that later. Okay, well, right now I think we need to get you to the school nurse. Senpai, are you okay? Yeah, don't worry about me. I couldn't completely support her when I caught her, and her weight brought my arms down to bang against the floor. That, of course, hurt like hell. Oof. But I can't show any weakness right now. I'm not screaming in pain, at least. There's probably no permanent damage anyway. Yeah, hey, Sadokawa. I locked my pain down and turned to face Sadokawa, who was still staying at the top of the stairs. If I hadn't been here, Sachi probably would have gotten seriously injured, or worse. Like I care. It was an accident anyway. Oh, yeah, definitely. But she looks away from me as she says it. When Sachi was falling, it didn't look like Sadakawa tried to reach out for her, so she probably isn't lying about that. But it doesn't make her any less responsible. I'm sure she's also responsible for that new mark on Sachi's face. Stop bullying Sachi. Yeah? Why should I listen to you? Because you almost got her killed just now. What do you think will happen to you if I tell a teacher or your parents what you did? Yeah, if you don't leave me alone, I'll make sure everyone knows what you're doing. Sachi doesn't retreat behind me. She just stands her ground, looking Sadokawa in the eye. Are you threatening me? You've got some nerve. Sadakawa walks down several steps, advancing towards Sachi menacingly. I just want I just want you to stop doing this. Sachi doesn't back away as Sadakawa approaches. I can't stop. I can't stand weaklings like you, and I refuse to let someone as pathetic as you do as you please. Then I'll tell. But I won't let you snitch on me. If you do, there'll be trouble. There was a pause there that I didn't do. What are you saying? I'm going to disappear. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. Bye. <laughs> what is that? A threat or something? <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I mean, no one likes you, so bye. Huh? I'm saying... I'm going to leave this school. It's not like I have any friends here, and I can't mess with you anymore. So there's no point in me being here. I'll transfer to a different school. My parents don't give a shit anyway. Okay. Y you don't have to go that far. Shut up! I can't even stand to be around you anymore. And I can't let you snitch on me. So I'm leaving. Got it? <clears throat> Sadakawa presses Sachi's phone into her hand before heading down the stairs. We watch her go and keep staring at the stairwell even after she's gone. Both of us completely dumbfounded by what just happened. After a while, Tomo and Akimi appear on the stairs in place of Sadokawa. Mamura, Sachi-chan, are you guys alright? We just passed Rui-chan on the stairs. Was she here? Yeah, she was. I don't really know what just happened, to be honest, but she said she'd stop bullying Sachi. She also said that she hated her and was going to change schools. So it's a win-win for everyone. Wait, Ryu-chan said that? Yeah, I don't know if she's serious or not. There's no way that's going to happen. Why not? Didn't Sawakawa say she was going to change schools in middle school as well? Akimi. It was for a similar reason too, I think. What the hell? I'm going to go talk to her. Akimi rushes down the stairs and we can hear her stomping down the hallway even after she steps out of sight. Hey, Akimi. Jeez, a girl. Tomo follows her down the stairs. Will Akimi Senpai be okay? Yeah, she has Tomo. Wish she might be able to hold the ground now. Tomo's the one I'm worried about. Well, whatever. <laughs> Sadokawa said she was going to transfer to another school. But I wonder if it really is that easy, you know? A at least I can do more than just cry now. Yay! 
Yeah, you stood up to her. I was amazed, honestly. You're completely different from when we first met. It's all thanks to you, Senpai. You're giving me too much credit. In the end, you're the one who stood up to her, not me. Even so, thanks for everything you've done. For helping me change. For frightening me. Hey, you know, this is where we first met, isn't it? We haven't come back here in a long time, haven't we? Yeah. Lately, we've been having lunch on the second floor with Akimi and Tomo. I really am grateful to you, Senpai. She has changed. She hasn't been stuttering nearly as much as we, when we first met. And she smiles a lot more as well. Aww. And when we talk, she looks right at, right at me instead of, well, anywhere else. But that eye of her has never changed. It stayed bright and shining this whole time. And I can't get it out of my mind. Da, da, da. We stand there in silence for a while. I gaze into her eye. She gazes into mine. Hey. Yes? You know, even if she doesn't leave the school, I don't think she'll be hurting you anymore. I think you're right. I'm not the weakling she thought I was anymore. And when she came to shove me, you really weren't there for me, senpai. You saved me. I guess that means your wounds are finally going to heal. Yeah, I guess so. Do you want to touch them? While I still have them, I mean. Sh sure. Okay. Sachi closes her eye and presses her body into mine. Just like last time. Maybe it's selfish of me, but I've been waiting for this. I put my right hand on her shoulder, just like last time. But this time, I don't put my hand on a scar on her brow. Instead, all her eyes still close, while she's so vulnerable. I put my free hand on her under her chin and lift her head up before putting my lips to hers. Oh. Oh. Yay! First kiss achieved with the Mono Eye Waifu. I let, her lip, I let her lips touch for only a moment, just enough for Sachi to feel it, and she rears back a little, blinking at me in astonishment. <laughs> Yo, that was unfair, you know. Aww. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry. Do it again. Do it right this time. Oh! Oh my gosh! Yes! Oh! oh. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to say. Oh! Now we're now we're even. I think. Her eye has caught me in its spell, and I couldn't refuse her even if I wanted to. I take her by the shoulder again as we slowly come together. Her eye is open this time. Oh. Yes. Just as I feel myself being drawn into her eye, I draw her body close to me. Oh. I'm happy. I'm a happy boy. Yay. Oh, oh, we're going through all of them. Oh. I really love this. This was, this was, this was, this was nice. This is amazing. Oh. Okay, so 
while this is going on, I should probably talk about the game now. Since it's over, I think. Since I've gotten everything done with. Oh. Uh, I'm, just, I'm still astonished right now. Cause it, this, is, this is great. I love this. Thank you for playing. Oh, no problem. I gotta say, this was probably my favorite vision novel of all time. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this story. Hey, achievements. English reader in love sight. Nice. Anyway, I really enjoyed this story. But it, it, it's the story is quite simple, but it's still intriguing to to read along. It's it's well paced. It's and like it's it breaks off quite evenly. That it's easy, that's not only digestible to for not only digestible for you to completely understand what's going on, but also very quite memorable for certain scenes. I, I the characters were like the characters did also have like quite a good feel to them. Like they actually had personalities that you, that that you can understand and actually put a face to. Although I wouldn't say from Muro, since you are basically the you, you're in the eyes of Muro. Oh, bag! What are you doing? Uh, I would say the. I do want to point out that the resolve with Ruri-chan, Sachi and Sachi-chan was quite, uh, eh. I mean, it was cut and dry, like, straight to the point, like, after, like, so long of, like, bullying and stuff like that, I don't think, like, just a quick resolve like that could, like, end immediately. I think they could have touched upon that a little bit more, but besides that, it's absolutely amazing. It's a great visual novel. Like, my, it's, probably my most my, it's probably my favorite visual novel of all time it will be for quite a while gosh now it's over well kind of sad oh let's let's look at some stuff look at those extras gallery oh Oh, Sachi. The best scene ever. It's a, a jukebox. I guess, oh, these are old songs. That's neat. Cinema. It's these bad boys. One, catch my eyes. Hey, you watch he's over. Afterworld. Oh, hey, thank you so much for buying and playing through Love at First Sight. Hiti Hito Membo. I don't have to say that. This is supposed to be an afterword, but since my thoughts about the visual novel and the story of its production and stuff are pretty much covered in the excerpts you unlocked after you cleared the game, I don't really have anything important to say here. I guess this is just going to be my last word to you, if you don't mind listening. I first created the heroine of our story, Yusui Sachi, about two years ago. This all began as a few illustrations I posted on Pixieve as a mock-up of a game. I have been living in America for about six years now, and I return to Japan once every three years or so. My next return lined up with Komitia, so my first time participating in the event as a creator was going to be Komitia 107, and I had planned on signing this game there. Huh. So this is a the developer, I assume. And I, I assume Komitia is a convention or something. By the way, if you're wondering why I chose to publish this story as a game instead of a doujinshi, that's because it's not nearly as easy to print your own doujinshi in America as it is in Japan. Not easy at all, in fact. Plus, printing a book in color is expensive. And since I've never drawn manga before, I don't know if it would actually shell. Shell? Sell. 
I had a bunch of leftover DVDs, and I figured that if I made a game, I could burn them all into DVDs myself. So basically, I decided on making a game, because that's what was cheap and convenient for me. To be honest, I thought to myself many times along the way that maybe... Wait, DVDs? Fuck. It's quite a while. I thought to myself many times along the way that maybe drawing a manga would be easier. Game needs a story and music on top of programming the actual game. I really ended up paying for myself a decision. I didn't start working on the game until about two months before Kamitia. I almost didn't make the deadline. I did most of the work myself, but I worked together with Kyo 1110 on the music. Aside from tracks Missing Love, Hopping Steps, and Lazy Head, Kyo 1110 did all of the tracks for me on a MIDI keyboard on his computer. I helped out here and there. There probably wouldn't have been as many tracks as there are if I had tried to do it alone. Oh, the music is very nice actually. I, I didn't put it out when I was talking about it. I don't think the music would have turned out as well as it did. I really owe Kyo 1110 a lot. Since I tried to do it in such a short amount of time, everything came out worse than what I had planned. Though I'm not trying to make excuses for the quality of the game. I wanted to implement more than one route. I also wanted a bunch of events to happen throughout the game so everyone would experience a unique story. But it turned out that all I had time for was a visual novel with one path. Yeah, it was pretty odd. Yeah, I saw that. Like, It seems quite a much of a linear story. But to, in all in all fairness, like you did a great job making this into a linear story. Like I don't even care if there was like separate paths or anything. I really like enjoyed this. All you can do in this story is woo Sachi. There's not really much of an over overarching theme. I feel it ended up being pretty flimsy. Eh. There will probably be a lot of scenes where players start thinking things like, "Shouldn't this scene have more art to go with it?" Or "This looks rushed." Yeah, yeah, there were parts of this story where I were like saying, like, this crop, you could have changed this. Like, for instance, where most of the faces were Akimi. They, 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 there could have been probably faces where Akimi should have, there probably should have been right faces for Akimi in certain scenes that didn't look right. So yeah, I, I saw a few of those. And I think I'd agree with them. I didn't have enough time. If I had just one more month, I could have added more art or fixed parts of the story I didn't like. And I thought about releasing a patch to do all that. I think that the things I ended up cutting for, the t for time might have been interesting, and I'd like to try adding them in again, but don't count on me fixing this version. At the very least, I was able to learn a lot and have fun working on this game. If I ever try making another game, I think I can make it better than this one. Next, I will have a lot more stuff, but I also wanted to try making more game-like game. Like a game where you wander around a labyrinth in an unknown world. Woo! I mean, I'm not even sure there is going to be a next one, and I'm going to take a break from making games for now. It really takes a lot out of you, yeah, I would assume so. Ultimately, I've got a lot of regrets surrounding this game since it doesn't even come close to the vision I had for it. I've always planned to make a game with the character Yusu Isachi, but finally doing that feels really very rewarding. Once again, I want to thank you Q1110 for taking part in this visual novel's development, and I want to thank you and all the other players. Finally, I'm very grateful to all those who helped out Sachan Yusu Isachi from, from before the game's development and onward. True grateful to all of you. Aw. Hey, achievement. Author's voice. After it. Ooh, these are extras. Uh, I'm probably I'm gonna leave this here. Oh, what's history? Whoa! Posted April 19th, 2012. Confessing to a lucky, pale, one-eyed girl. This has a pun that you might see a lot of in these extras, but unfortunately it's not easy to translate into English. Its first character, I can't, is such a name, but it can't, can also mean luck or happiness. It's a home phone in Japanese for Sachi's last name, Yusui. It means pale, slight, or sparse. But then yeah, you get Sachi Yusui, the lucky, pale, one-eyed girl. Caption. This is a game where you make a lucky, pale, one-eyed girl happy, isn't it? I think that could come up the combination of one eye plus confession is kind of sickeningly sweet for suffering. So I want to do this to make her happy. I'm going to have to guess at what the boy is saying to her. I was rushing with this, so, so, so as much as I hate to admit it, there's a lot I forgot to draw. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, oh, so we put in our own. He, you, what? I, 
You want to go out with me? Yeah, I, I, well, I want to go out with you. Uh, um, you're not making fun of me. No, of course not. I actually want to go out with you. This isn't some kind of game, is it? No, it's not. I, I actually want to go out with you. Like... No, it's not. You really want to... With me? Aw. Now that I think of it, he doesn't seem creeped out by me. Um, I only have one eye, you know. Oh, yeah, it's, that's pretty obvious and all, but I still want to go out with you. Seem like a cool person to hang out with. And I think you can see for yourself that I'm covered in scars. I mean, I have a lot. Um, you, you really want to go out with me? You really serious? Dead serious. Ooh, don't worry. I've go I've only got my eye on you, girl. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm so happy. Tears are. Um, and. I hope I can make you happy. Aww. Isui Sachi only has one eye. Acne never, never seems to last long. Body is covered in cuts and bruises. Personality matches her appearance. You just want to make her happy, don't you? This is where it all started. Honestly, I wasn't so good at drawing back then. I never thought I'd really end up making this into a game at the time. I'm gonna leave that there. Achievement unlocked. First sight. Cause so many achievements. But yeah, this app, this is running on a bit too long. Gosh, I really enjoyed this. Ugh. Oh, this is I love this. This is well done. But I'm gonna have to end. I'm gonna have to make this. I'm gonna have to end the final episode of Love at First Sight. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure into this visual novel. If you enjoyed this, be sure to check out all the other videos I have on my channel. I do other visual novels as well. And other games, if that's not your cup of tea. But with that said, my name is Ben Sunnington, and I'll see you all next time.